Welcome back and thank you for staying with us. All right, so we'll be going back to the story of uh, the Edo State Deputy Governor's removal and his impeachment that uh, Governor Basaki is swearing in a new Deputy Governor, uh, Godwins, as Shaibo's replacement as well. And to discuss this further, we have uh, joining me legal practitioner Dennis Osaretin. Hello, Dennis. Thank you so much for joining me on the news this afternoon. Good afternoon. Thanks for having me. All right. So can you tell us what legal grounds were cited for the removal or impeachment of the deputy governor, uh, Shaibu? Yes, just like you already must have heard, the deputy governor was, um, the former deputy governor was, among other things, accused of, you know, divulging, you know, official secrets and gross misconduct. Right, and the uh, sequence of those allegations, a panel of seven was set up by the chief of those states. The panel commenced hearing, gave ample opportunity for the former governor to state his own side of the story, and at the end of their proceedings or their investigations, they submitted the report of the House of Assembly, and the rest is history, as they say, because whatever will amount to gross misconduct is as defined by the House of Assembly. And I've also defined that uh, the Deputy Governor has committed acts that they can be defined as gross misconduct. That invariably or ultimately led to the impeachment of the former Deputy Governor and the same. We are now, we're not, we're not having it. All right, so uh, sorry, it's in, uh, network seems to uh, be a problem uh, on your end. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. All right, please go ahead. I think it's much better now. You are freezing at some point. Yeah, I thought, yeah the point I was trying to make before the network, uh, you know, interrupted was that, <laughs> yes, there was an allegation against the former deputy governor. And one of such allegations was that he was accused of divulging on official secrets, you know, that information or secret that came, you know, to him by virtue of his office. And he was not, you know, having taken or sworn to oath to keep those things as secret or as privilege, he was not authorized to divulge such uh, information. And I said, secret of that allegation, a panel was set up to investigate and find out what the real issues were. At the end of the session of the panel, a report was submitted to the House of Assembly, and the House of Assembly, in its wisdom, found that indeed the Deputy Governor has committed acts that can be likened to gross misconduct and therefore took a vote for his impeachment. And like he said, the rest is now history. Okay. Now, we, we're actually aware that, you know, the relationship between uh, the Governor and the former Deputy Governor Shaibu has been shaky for some time. And, uh, you know, we expected this impeachment a while back, but not this close to the end of their tenure. Now, uh, can you tell us what role did the State Assembly play in initiating the impeachment process? Yeah, for me, the House of Assembly, like we have always maintained, is an independent arm of government. And the Constitution gives them the power of impeachment. The impeachment is not alien to our laws, and it will not be the first deputy governor that will be impeached in accordance with the provisions of the Constitution. You know, like we have always argued, you know, impeachment is one of the tools with which the House of Assembly keeps the executive in check. So if any member of the executive is found to have been, to, to, to be found wanting, or is found to have committed such an offense that will be termed to be gross misconduct in the House of, the House of Assembly, they owe it a duty under law to investigate such an allegation and if indeed the person is found wanting, the appropriate sanction to be meted out is the sanction of impeachment. And that's exactly what the other people in those states have done today. And I think we should commend them for being bold enough to implement the clear wordings of the 1999 Constitution. And, and I think we should be, they, they, they should be applauded for that bold initiative. Okay, but then how has this uh, impeachment impacted the uh, stability that I'm talking about, the political stability or the governance in Edo State at the moment? 
I don't, I don't see any, for me, the weak link in the chain of the administration of Obataki has just been removed. Because it now appears to some of us that the deputy governor, you know, the former deputy governor, uh, Comrade Felix Shaibu, appears to now be a clog in the wheel of progress. So it is only expedient that it should be shown the way out. So allow the governor and the current administration to finish where in the state. And that's exactly what they have done. You cannot, you know, somebody who, because of his personal ambition, want to consistently rub the boat and break down the rules. It's only expedient that the Act of Assembly will come in as a third and independent arm to create this negative stability. And that is what has been done today. All right. Now, you're saying that uh, it doesn't matter that the former Deputy Governor Shaibu came out to respond, you know, on his impeachment, you know, and talk about, you know, justice being served and all that. Nothing is going to happen, you know, uh, as far as governance is concerned. It has moved forward. Because, like I said, the deputy governor was given ample opportunity to come and state the social side of the story. But unfortunately, he decided, you know, to, 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 to stay away from the, from the proceedings of the panel. Although a lawyer represented him, uh, but they gave reasons why they couldn't continue with, their, with, their, with, with, with his presence at the panel. That notwithstanding, he has been given a right to fair hearing. And that's what is important. So whether you now decide not to excite that right, it's a different ballgame entirely. Mm. What is important to some of us in those states right now is that the governor should be allowed to finish where he should be allowed to focus on delivering the dividends of democracy. That is more important than any personal ambition of any uh, uh, All right, now talking about, you know... The government governor is a politician, and his ambition is not more important than the dividends of democracy that the people are yearning to get. All right, now talking about, you know, delivering the dividends of democracy, let's talk about, you know, the background of the new deputy governor. Now, that's Godwin's and his experience. Do you think that, you know, his background and experience has actually prepared him for the role of deputy governor? Yes, but looking at his profile, you know, for me, he has a very robust profile. He's an engineer by training, like I'm told. He has a master's in public administration, like I'm also told. And I'm, I'm very confident that he's a young man. He's going to represent the youth very well. And in these few months, he will have a golden opportunity for him to also, you know, write his names on the sands of time. You know, the history beckons. You know, if he performs well as deputy governor of Edo State as of today, that means his future is very bright politically. And we must all rally around him to ensure that if he, you know, he joins us with the governor to ensure that, it, it, you know, he delivers on the mandates of finishing well in uh, those states because the PDP is a part to beat in uh, those states and they cannot be seen to be doing anything otherwise because the elections that is coming up in a, you know in, in, in a fortnight is one that will be you know anchored on the performance of the PDP so the anything that will distract the PDP government from performing in uh, those states should be resisted and I'm very happy that the House Assembly right now has risen up to the occasion and they've done the needful and I congratulate the new governor and I wish him well in his new office. All right. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Asaritin, for uh, joining me and speaking on this. Thank you very much for having me and God bless at those states.